Good evening, Commandos. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's been a while. In case you forgot, my name's Rooster. I'm one of the Chrome Commandos. Uh, no, crazy, right? <laughs> All right, uh, bad joke out of the way. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been a while. Um, ever since Squiggles moved out of HQ, uh, it's just been me and Nel Banaski out here. Uh, Red Lion's been working a lot. Uh, you know, Rook's been busy. I'm trying to think, you know, yeah, it's just life's gotten kind of crazy. That's how it goes. Um, and I mean, you know, me and Nel Banaski, we've been preparing for uh, the Little Rooster coming out. Uh, Blueberry, that's their current code name. I guess we'll see what happens there. Um, so it's been, it's been pretty crazy. It's been pretty exciting, though. Uh, and, uh, unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know how you guys look at it, we do not, uh, do subscription boxes anymore. That's just how it is. I mean, it's just at the point, we got to the point where it's just, they were still fun. Like, Geek Fuel is still fantastic. Marvel Collector Core, I'm getting occasionally, because I really like some of them. Uh, it all depends on what the selection's gonna be. I'm not doing a full year. I'm not gonna give them a hundred and whatever, eighty dollars. Uh, so, you know, things like that. So that's kind of where it is right now. Um, so... As that, uh, we're going to kind of change up a little bit. Uh, I just seen Albanaski sneak into the frame, so she looked very confused. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, we're still going to talk about comic books. We're still going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, the things we already talked about. We're going to do some board game reviews. Um, and that's kind of where a big uh, focus is going to be. Um, not doing as much in the uh, mystery boxes and not spending as much money there. Um, I am spending uh, more or a similar amount on uh, board games nowadays. Um, I've really, uh, really dived into the board game hobby. I already was into it, but now I've dived into a little bit more. So what I'm thinking about doing, and uh, so you'll see a couple videos probably. Uh, I'm not sure when this is going to go up. I'm not sure if I'm going to try to get a bunch up, and then that way I'll just, you know, be able to start posting them. Or if I'm just going to uh, wait, or I'm going to fucking just post the first one, and then the next one. And, you know, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I don't know if we're going to keep this up. Uh, it's just, I mean, right now we've thought the Chrome Commandos are on life support. And it's either, uh, you know, it's do or die. It's really see if we're going to keep doing this. And I want to keep doing it. Squiggles wants to keep going. Uh, Red Lion, you know, he really wants to see it keep going. So we've got to evolve. We've got to figure out what's going to work with our lives and what's going to work uh, for us. So um, after that long, rambly uh, intro, I apologize. Um, this is going to be the first kind of trial. Um, and I'm stealing this idea from my buddy, uh, Matt Lemke. He does... Uh, through Gamer Goggles, which is a fantastic Facebook page, a fantastic YouTube channel. Uh, it's, he does a lot of really cool stuff, and he does a lot of board game, a lot of miniatures. Um, so I'm kind of taking this idea from him. So, Matt, if you're watching this one, uh, there's a shout-out to you. Uh, you have more subscribers and fans than I do, so I don't think that'll matter. Uh, but, hey, maybe it will. Um, and he does what's called uh, box breakings, I believe. Um, they're really cool. He just kind of shows you what's in the components of the box, uh, what's going on. And so that's kind of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to kind of go through and I'm just going to kind of show you what's going up. Uh, this is a game I actually just got at Gen Con. It's not technically out yet. So it's like a pre-release of the game, but I had to pay them full retail price of it. So nothing too special. Uh, but it is called Whitehall. Um, a game I believe I might have reviewed uh, forever ago. Uh, might be in the notes if I can't remember if it actually went up or not. Uh, it's called Letters from Whitechapel. Um, this is Letters from Whitechapel Little Brother. It is fantastic. It's very small. Uh, me and Aaron discovered that it is a perfect two-player game. Uh, so you get your rule book. It's nice, thin, pretty simple. If you played Whitechapel, you kind of get the idea of what's going to happen. Uh, you get a really cool screen. Uh, this is for the Jack the Ripper character. It's got a full map of the board on the back of it. So that's the screen they hide behind, Dungeon Master screen. Uh, you get a board. Uh, it's not as big as Whitechapel, but it carries just uh, almost as many spaces. Uh, which, if you haven't seen Whitechapel, this doesn't help you. But if you have seen the Whitechapel board, uh, you know how big it is. So this is massive. It's really cool, though. Oh, that was the box one that fell. Uh, so Jack, uh, the point of this game is uh, each of the quarters of the board, Jack is trying to get to. He's trying to do a location. Um, you've got a bunch of clues and a bunch of... Uh, and four red ones, uh, tokens. So the clues, you know, the investigators are moving. There's only three investigators in this one, and they're all minis instead of pawns, which is awesome. So, you know, you put a clue if you find a clue for Jack, and when Jack completes an objective, he puts a red token. Instead of using, like, the wretched tokens, uh, the wretched pawns, and killing them and moving it all, it all takes place in one night. Um, again, it's a very vague overview, but you're going to get, uh, like, 15 clues, and you're going to get four... Uh, four space uh, red tokens. And these are just gonna signify that there is a body part that's been placed. 
Um, it's kind of using the logic of the history that um, when they were building White, uh, White Hall, which I believe is Scotland Yard, I'd have to look at the history there, they're finding, uh, they found body parts, and they're like, oh shit, is Jack the Ripper back? Um, so the idea is the character, uh, the Jack the Ripper, or Suspect Jack, is going out and doing, uh, he's putting body parts out. So he's trying to get those in each quarter of the board. Uh, there's small rules for that, but, you know, I'm not going to go into that too hard here. Uh, maybe if we do a, re uh, a video where we go hardcore and the rules, we'll cover that. Uh, you get, uh, they're nice, kind of, they're nice, thick cardboard. Uh, it's very similar to if you played One Night, uh, what you would find in the One Night Ultimate Werewolf, uh, like, character, to uh, character panels. So Jack gets two boats. He gets two carriages, which are just special movements he can do in two alleys. Um, and then the investigators, uh, they each have one, and they each have a power, which you can or can't or uh, don't have to use. It all depends on how you want to balance the game. It's got a really good balancing mechanic, and it also, you can use things from Whitechapel or things from the Whitechapel expansion, Dear Boss, which I think is freaking awesome. Um, yellow guy's got a little dog that he hangs out with named Smoker. It's fantastic. We haven't actually used the powers yet, so I wish, uh, well, not wish, but one day we will. It's just, we keep playing with different jacks, and it's really hard to win as Jack the Ripper already. So if you add powers to it, it's really hard. Uh, there's a great scaling mechanic, but uh, this game is tense. Uh, Lunch from Whitechapel will take, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. We have ripped through this game in, I think the longest has been maybe half an hour. So we're ripping through this game quick. It's fantastic. Uh, there's the other cops. Uh, they each have a number. Uh, like I said, you're only playing with three. Uh, there's a variant where you can add more. You want more investigators. I think there's up to five spaces. Uh, they use the same minis, in essence, that they gave you in the Dear Boss expansion for Whitechapel Fantasy Flights. Just like, we already have them, so let's use them. So, but they're fine minis. Uh, you know, they're color-coded, so you know exactly where they are. You got the Jack the Ripper to mark turns. Uh, you know, you're never going to actually use this on the board. Uh, finally, you should always have pen to boxes like this. And then finally, you have your pad, which uh, I have played this more than Letters from Whitechapel. And Letters from Whitechapel is one of my favorite games. So that says something, I think. Uh, especially I've only had this about two weeks. Uh, so there's your pad. Um, it all takes place under one round. Uh, these are the different uh, objective areas you're going to mark. You're going to mark those at the beginning of the game, one of these tokens in each quadrant. And then this is how you have 15 turns. So you're not you're no longer going to have the uh, time of the crime delay, which is really cool. Uh, you're not going to move the cops around. There's no letters. Uh, so it's, it's a little nicer in that aspect, I think. It's much more streamlined, which seems to be what Fantasy Flight is doing with some of their board games. Um, especially with the new Civ coming out with uh, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition, which I just played today. It was fantastic. Whew, if I did an unboxing of that bad boy, there's a lot there, so that might not happen. Uh, unless you guys wanted to, let me know. Um, again, you know, uh, letters from Whitechapel. Uh, not letters, uh, like I said, this is a kind of an early release. I got this at Gen Con, so it was one of the perks to uh, wait in the Fantasy Flight Line, which is awesome. Uh, TI was another perk I got for waiting in the Fantasy Flight Line. Uh, both have been fantastic and well, well worth it. I think, which bag did I put them in, guys? I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so that's what I got here. Um, if there's any games that I have uh, that you've heard me talk about or you've seen me post pictures of or anything, let me know. Uh, if not, if there's other games you're just interested in, uh, you know, I know a lot of people with board games. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more in the board game hobby around here. Uh, there's some meetups I think I'm going to try to hit. Uh, there's one coming up. Uh, I don't know if this is going to go up before it or not, so I don't really want to announce it. But uh, I will say that on September 9th, I think. I believe that's a Wednesday. Uh, not 100%. Uh, it's going to be the Wednesday after Labor Day. Uh, there's going to be a meetup at the Camp Brewing Company. I'm going to hit. Uh, it's a uh, bring uh, work replacement game, so I'm going to take uh, Champions of Midgard, which I just got some cool stuff at Gen Con for. I spent a lot at Gen Con, guys. Way too much for the kid on the way. Uh, but yeah, so that was rambly. Uh, sorry, it's the first video back, so, uh, you know, and I like to talk anyway, so please excuse me there. Uh, but like I said, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more board games or just thoughts on board games, let me know. Um, I've really gotten to the board game hobby recently, so it's really easy for me to talk about board games, or at least really easy to pretend that I want to talk about board games. So thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope you found this at least slightly useful. Um, and definitely, when this game comes out, I think it's supposed to come out in the next uh, month or two. I highly recommend checking it out if you played Letters from Whitechapel or you're really interested in a hidden movement game. This is truly superb for two people. Uh, it even plays well with four, which is what we played with earlier tonight. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Whitehall from Fantasy Flight. Thanks, guys. And, you know, how it's always, this is Rooster, signing out.